and welcome back to the Don Bullock Chevrolet Morning Show. And this morning we have the pleasure of the smiling face of Senator Lisa Stone Barnes. Good morning. Good morning, Sandra. How are you? I'm doing well. I hope you are. I am. Mm -hmm. Um, you have a, um, you're now a senator, you were in the House, so how much busier are you in the Senate than you were in the House and what's the difference and all that? Well, it's, um, it's a big difference just in numbers. Right. Um, when you're talking about the Senate with 50 members and the House has 120 members and also the size of the district is right. a lot larger for the Senate, so that means more work you know, right. and more time spent being out and about in in um, in two counties sure. to cover all that territory, but it's right. been it's been very um, rewarding so far, and I've right. enjoyed it. Well, you act like you enjoy it, so that that's good. Um, so um, we're here this morning to talk about uh, Senate Bill 473. Um, Senate can I call you Lisa? Of course. She's Senator Barnes, and we want to show respect, but but Lisa's one of ours, so um, in our community, so um, we're used to Lisa. But anyway, Lisa, um, Senate Bill 473, you you have always been a person struck me as a person, and I know you are that since you've been in the House that listens to your constituents, and even when you were a commissioner. You know, you just have a passion for listening to your, you know, your constituents. And talk Absolutely. about that a little bit. Oh, well, I think that's what the public expects from um, their senators and their representatives is to be there. And that's just part of the job, I believe, to, right. to listen to people and to try to respond sure. in the best way. And um, especially their concerns and address those concerns. Right. We had an audit here in Rocky Mount last June, and um, you know, Auditor Wood did a good job, and um, but but there was only so much she could do, and she said that in an interview that we did by phone with her. There's only so much I can do, so I think the citizens just became very, you know, disgruntled, very oh gosh, you know, disappointed is the word just disappointed right. that they thought all these things were going to happen and they couldn't have we couldn't do but so much so um, you got a lot of calls right. I'm sure you got a plethora of calls I did and so that's kind of what led up to Senate Bill 473 is that correct that is absolutely correct um, there was a vast outcry after the release of the findings yes. of the audit um, in fact, the audit itself said there were over, it was about 213 complaints that were logged in on the hotline right, at the auditor's right. office. So that is, it's, that's a high number of complaints yes. by any measure. And so it... Um, then and, compounded with the people that called you. Yes, the people that reached out to me personally. So um, that, that led to this to this kind of legislation that um, we've drafted to try to address some of those issues that were brought to me by the constituents. Right. So how does that work? You sponsored the bill originally. I did. And then what do you do? You go get other sponsors right. for the bill. Mm -hmm. So there are some other sponsors, um, mainly um, Sanders, Edwards, um, and yourself though right. are the three That's main right. ones, but there are others. That's right. Um, so in the Senate, you have you can have up to three co-sponsors. Okay. Oh, well, primary sponsors. I'm sorry. You can have up to three primary sponsors. Okay. Um, on on a piece of legislation, and then it's open for uh, the rest of the membership for co-sponsoring. And we have um, co-sponsors on this bill from all across the state um, that are very interested in seeing this type of legislation. So um, that's how that works. Right. Do you think this will be a bipartisan bill? I hope so. I can't imagine I the can't opposition either. who would be opposed to having no. more transparency, um, more accountability at the local level. Absolutely. Uh, so I, the different elements of um, the different elements of the and, and this bill is um, 
to enhance local government transparency, basically. Right. Isn't that what the whole thing is about? That's the whole premise is to, you know, we have a level of, of transparency, but this really strengthens and enhances what's already there. When you look at a bill and you see um, underlying text yes. in the bill, then that indicates the new portion yes. of the bill and the part that's not underlined is what's already existing in the in the statutes or in in the law. So okay. um, that's that's sort of the difference when you're you're looking at what this would change or add to right. in the form of um, of our laws. Let's talk about the elements of the particular bill. Um, so um, the first thing I read was it was to give more teeth to the That's auditor's right. findings. That's right. So, so the first section, there's four sections in this bill. The first section would address um, the auditor's investigative report. Right. So when that happens, that would trigger the local government commission then having the ability to select an independent auditor for that government um, entity that was audited. Right. So that would take place and up to three years from the time that the audit happened. Okay. And it would just be an, it would allow the, um, the local government commission to right. then select the auditor to have a new set of eyes to right. look at and to perform these That's audits good. that are that are necessary and are required for local governments. Right. And you sought information from the auditor and the LOC. I did. Uh, I did. The LGC, LGC. I'm sorry. Yeah, LGC. the local government commission. Um, you sought information from both of those mm -hmm. folks. I did. I, I, before doing this. I realized, you know, that's that's in, under their purview and yes. so it was, um, I wanted to get input from b both of those agencies um, uh, and make sure that I wasn't leaving anything out or I was doing, we make sure that the draft, the, it was written properly. Um, so right, sure. And you know, the more eyes and input, Absolutely. the better. Yes. And then number two in the bill is um, garnishment of money owed when officials misuse funds. Gosh, sorry. Um, when they misuse funds um, so they can garnish. Yes, this, um, this would give the finance officer of the local government the authority to garnish wages. And it's really for any debt, any debt that's owed that's on the books for services of that, mm -hmm. of that city, town, or county. Right. Then this is um, trying to, the thought process was to, um, you know, have a higher standard for yes. elected officials. Yes. And someone that's going to be handling the public's money. Yes. You Absolutely. would expect that they yes. would be able to handle their personal finances, you know, if they're going to be yes. expected to handle public, the public's money. Now, this bill is a state bill. It is. It's a statewide bill. But I'm going to get a little bit personal, but... You know, Lisa is doing this, it's a state bill, so understand yes. that. But I'm going to get a little bit, just for a minute, um, with the garnishment. We have a situation in Rocky Mount, and you can go generic when you answer the question, um, where um, we have a city council person's utility bills written off. Now, when they're written off, there's not a whole lot they're written off. So with the garnishment, that's right. not that's, really... That's, it's moving forward, so I mean, I'm not an attorney, so I can't speak to right. that specific situation, but it would apply statewide to any type of debt that's owed to the, the right. city or the local government and give the finance officer that... Uh, that is, it's actually, this bill is a, makes it a requirement right. that if it, there's a debt owed, going forward after this bill would be passed into law, going forward, then that would be, those wages would be garnished. Yes. Okay, and the next thing, um, it would criminalize the misuse of funds. Right. It would, um, 
It makes it a class H felony for a public official to receive personal financial gain from their position. So that helps to give some teeth. Yes, um, absolutely. To you know, you might go to jail. Maybe you might right. not. You know, it might deter a little bit. Exactly, and that was the thought process. Yes. To, you know, you, you have this in writing up front before you run for office. You know right. what the requirements are, what the standards are, right. and, um, and just to know that there's going to be consequences yes. for that type of behavior. I think it's so important for the public um, to have trust in the people that are sure. governing them. Yes, sure. Now, this bill can be retroactive back to 2018, right? That's right. That's right. In the um, in the first part, uh, the first section of the bill regarding the audits, it would be retroactive to 2018, and so um, you know the thought process. That's a good thing. Yeah, the thought process was, you know, we need to give that authority to the LGC to um, work with the state auditor's office and um, to be able to have that look back, so that. Um, they would be able to address those concerns because we, yes. we know government moves slowly and sometimes yes. you know, if, even if the government, um, the local government would implement the recommendations of the auditor, it takes time sure. to implement those changes or those recommendations so um, this would help with that and also help so the auditor doesn't have to start all over with a new right. audit or investigation. Wouldn't this also include conflicts of interest? Because yes. we've had some of those locally, conflicts of interest with council people um, voting mm -hmm. when they were employed at a certain place, right. but they were a council person and placing a vote. Right. It would include also some some of that, right. would it not? That is correct. The, the last section does um, address conflicts of interest or self-dealing. Um, yes as it's referred to by elected officials who serve on nonprofits um, and are also on, serving on their local government board. So that there are specific um, conditions that the bill spells out um, regarding those conflicts. And I mean, it's just, it's just being open and transparent. Absolutely. So, it all falls under transparency. Exactly. It and really does. Why wouldn't you want to be transparent? I know when I served as a county commissioner, I would always ask you know, the county attorney about if I felt like there was a conflict of interest with anything that we were voting on and seek his advice, mm -hmm. of course, and, and right. he would tell me, you're fine, you don't, there's no conflict here, but for me, I felt better if I right. went ahead and disclosed that before we voted. Just that's right, exactly. To make it, to make people aware and make the public aware, and I think that that gives you credibility, and it give, it enhances the public's trust when they know that you are trying to cooperate and trying to be open. Up, exactly, about. we've got to regain the public's trust. That, and we've that's, got to. That is, um, especially in this community. Yeah, that's we a goal. have to. If you, I mean, if you pay attention to the, uh, what the state auditor is um, investigating, who they're yes. investigating. I mean, you see reports all the time of yes. lots of different agencies and how they're spending the money. All this COVID money that's coming about is really, you know, we need oversight. Yes. Oh, absolutely, yes. But, you know, what happens is when you have public distrust, it affects voting. It goes all the way down to voting. It does. Because people say, I'm not voting. Why would I vote? Look at this. So, um, you know, it, it affects all the way down to voting it and does. everything. And so. this is just a first step, you know. We're, we're trying to address some of the issues statewide that we're seeing pop up in the um, investigations. So, you know, it's a first step. It's, it's, um, it doesn't cover everything that's out there, right. of course, but we are giving it a shot and hopefully it will lead to some more, um, maybe even a local government ethics yes. act that would provide more training and more oversight, more accountability because as, as a candidate and um, a public servant of a legislator, I have to fill out a disclosure every year. I have to fill out one when I run for office as a candidate, and I have to fill out another one during 
after I'm a, elected and sworn into office, right. disclosing my interest, my husband's interest in, right. in business, in real estate. Sure. So it's, I mean, it's 12 pages full of information. Right. So why wouldn't you want Exactly. The same thing locally for your local government officials. Absolutely. And, you know, grant money. We're getting a lot of grant money and, and fixing to get an influx of grant money in Nash, Edgecombe, and Rocky Mount, as you know. That's right. I, and um, the accountability, I mean, will this bill that's why I believe it's the accountability for, that's why for grant I believe money. It's so timely now because you know you've got yes. the um, <laughs> you know the American Rescue Act or program um, from the federal government coming down soon, and there's I've just I think Nash County is getting eighteen or nineteen thousand, Rocky Mount's getting thirteen thousand. Not sure about getting, Edgecombe yet. Yeah, I mean like thirteen million. I mean, did what, I say thousand? Yes. I meant million. <laughs> So I that's a million. lot of 13 money. 13 million and 18, you know, to mm -hmm. 19 uh, million, million dollars. dollars. I still want to say thousand dollars. Right. But anyway, million dollars, and there's got to be oversight. There's got to be oversight. We've got to know where this money is going, how it's going to be spent. Is it going to be on infrastructure? Is it going to be on this? So that's why, you know, these, these um, audits are so important that the local government commission requires. And I was looking over some last night. I mean, these documents are 250 pages, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of information contained in those documents. Yes. But sometimes, I mean, just you and I looking through those, right? Um, I wouldn't know exactly. where to start, and so um, we re really need, you know, as much oversight as possible. Oh, absolutely! And you know, that's the local government commission's job is to yes review those audits and make sure. That they just handle the financial part. They of do it. a good job mm -hmm. there too. I think they do a really good job. But um, well, walk us through, Lisa. Okay, the bill was put in on April one, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then I read where April fifth, which this is kind of insignificant, if that's the word um, that you would use. But April fifth, it says it passed a reading. The right. reading. Okay, so that's not, that's just kind of a formality. That's a formality yeah. when it's, it's um, formally introduced, that's the first reading. Yes. Um, and then it, it would be referred to the Rules Committee. All the bills go through rules, right, the rules chairman, and then they are dispersed into the different um, appropriate committees. Right. So this one has not been sent to any committees yet, so that would be the next step would be for the rules chairman to decide which committee it would go to. It would probably go to state and local government uh, first, mm -hmm. and um, then it would be vetted in that committee, and right. uh, any questions, any amendments could be brought forth um, for the bill, and then it would just go through that process, and once it's been vetted through the committees, then it would go to the floor for a vote in the Senate. Okay. So. Um, after it would pass the Senate, the Senate votes on it and pass, then it would be sent to the House and they would vet it through their committees. They wow. Are. Okay. And so, is there a plan in place? I know we talked earlier, you know, that how could anybody not be on board with this, but is there a plan in case of a veto? <laughs> I mean, hopefully the governor will, you know. I mean, no, I do not the have a plan. Wants transparency, you know. I do not have a plan for a veto because so. we expect that the governor would exactly. would want transparency. Is that right, Lisa? That's exactly what I would expect. <laughs> I I can't believe, you know, he's been a public servant in public elected office yes. for a long time. Uh, he was our attorney general for mm -hmm. 16 years. So right. How to could me, you not? How, how could you not support um, more, more transparency? Yes, yes. Well, we're looking forward to some votes, and we're looking forward to this bill passing, um, Senate Bill 473. We're excited about it. I'm seeing some excitement in the community. You know, we've seen a lot of people call us all the time on the morning show, and they call me off the morning show and they just say, what are we going to do? Woe is us. Woe are us. You know, well, 
um, there's some hope people feel like now with this bill. It really should be called the Hope Bill for our community, <laughs> really should. But um, Lisa, thank you so much for doing this and for listening to us. Well, that, I mean, again, that's, that's my job. That's what I was elected to do. And um, I am happy to do that, happy to um, receive feedback on mm -hmm. this bill, anything um, that anybody has concerns with about yes. it. Happy to address those call concerns. Call your office. Call my office. Can you give the number? Um, oh, okay. It is. It's, I know it's, it's nine one nine something probably, but <laughs> it is yeah. on the website. Of yeah, the, go to um, go to the website. Yeah, and you'll be able to find it. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll get that mm -hmm. number. What yes. I'll do is get that number today, and I will put it up on the morning show so that if you want to call uh, Senator Barnes' office, you can. Um, please do. She would like to hear your input. So. Um, and reach out to the other senators and other yeah, members that's important. to let them know because everybody yes. will be voting on this. It's a statewide bill, and we want to right. we want to hear from you know our our supporters, even Absolutely. you know anybody that's in opposition to it. I can't imagine, but that's what we're here for. Very good. Well, any you know I know this is a hard question, but is there kind of a time frame in mind? You know, how long does this process normally, or it could right. just, you don't know. It's just one of those things you just don't know. Well, the sooner the better. Yes, yes, that's what we're thinking. Yes, is what I, I would like to see happen, but there is a deadline. Our crossover deadline um, for the Senate is, uh, for, for both houses, is um, May 13th. May 13th. So, mm -hmm. so it needs to go through the committee process and be voted on in the Senate so that by May 13th it can cross over to the to other the, okay. chamber, to the House, to the House, so yeah. that it will go through um, their process. But that's fast, though. Yes, I mean that's less than a month now. Yeah, so, so that's pretty fast. Yes, faster than I thought actually. Like we said, government can be slow. So it can be. hopefully this will go right on through because it's no non it's a no nonsense bill. It's very common sense. It's, it it's, is. it's nonpartisan, it's not controversial. Yes. So I I really think and hope that um, it will go through without any hiccups. Yes. Well congratulations on your um, well, I don't know if this is your first bill, but um, well, it's my my first really um, since you've been in the Senate. In the I Senate, mean, in the it Senate. is. And um, wow, could you make so. an impact on on votes with this? So, thank you, Lisa, so much. Absolutely. And we'll have you back to maybe catch us up on what's going on in two or three weeks, maybe yes. a month. You know, yes, kind of, uh, I would love to follow up with. Yes, it. love to do that. So. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. And be safe on your drive to Raleigh. Okay. So we'll be right back right after this.